visit. And I know that this is possible. I've seen people do it with a spoon. I'm about ready to run to Target and buy a stick blender. We're an hour and 20 minutes in. Oh my goodness, you guys. Do you know what goes into soap? So making soap involves a process called saponification. And that's what happens when there's a chemical reaction between lye and fats. So we're gonna use a mix of coconut oil and olive oil, and then we're gonna add some lye to it, and we're gonna cook it to make the process happen faster. You can do cold process soap that you don't have to cook, but it's faster when you use a crock pot. So that's the plan for today. It's coconut oil. And it is solid until it become until it's more than 75 degrees. So we are going to just put some water around it for a little bit. Why did it try to feel loosen solid? It up because it's colder than 75 degrees. Can I just keep an eye on it? Sure. Just pour something in. And stop. stop. Yep. All right. Here goes the coconut oil. 13 ounces. Perfect. I actually enjoy cooking and doing things with coconut oil because my hands are always super dry. Just ridiculously dry and cracking. One thing about making soap in a crock pot is that you don't want all those chemicals in the crock pot that you use to make food. So I just got this one off the Facebook Buy Nothing page and I am super excited to have a soap crock pot again. Maybe I will make soap more often now that I have a dedicated crock pot again. I've read a few tutorials on hot press and cold process soap, both kinds of soap recently. There isn't a specific temperature that your oils need to be, but it's sort of anywhere between 110 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I haven't used this crock pot before, so I'm just gonna set it to low and keep an eye on the temperature of the oil while we let the lye solution cool. I moved outside because my kitchen is not well ventilated. Um, I've got my super fancy safety glasses and my two big gloves, but they will get the job done because lye is not a chemical to mess around with. I'm using a recipe from Wellness Mama um, and it's going to be 12 ounces of water and 3.8 ounces of lye. So I'm gonna start with the water. Oh, this is a 12 ounce cup. I'm gonna measure out 3.8 ounces of lye, which I found at Lowe's. Um, you wanna make sure that it is 100% lye, that it's not some other kind of drain cleaner that has other things mixed in. It actually was fairly difficult to find. Now I'm adding the lye to the water. You always want to do it this way, not the other way around. And it's going to start getting really hot as the lye reacts to the water. It'll get all cloudy. And then when it starts getting clear is when you know that it is safe to use. Our oil mixture is at 130 degrees, well, 129. Um, I have been using my meat thermometer because right now all that's in there is just oil. So I'm not worried about ruining my thermometer. From here on out though, I'm gonna use this one. Uh, this is the one that I got after Riley had a couple of febrile seizures and I wanted to be able to take the temperature while she was sleeping. Um, so now comes the fun part. We have a crock pot full of oil. We have our lye solution that has cooled down to 125.6 degrees which is below 150, which was the goal. Uh, we're gonna add those together and we are going to whisk them up with a whisk because like I said a while ago, in, you can in a minute. Um, like I said a while ago, my stick blender broke. Most people would do this with a stick blender, an immersion blender, but I don't have that. So that's what we got. Safety glasses are going back on. The gloves are gonna go back on for just a minute. Jed, can you step back for just a minute while I get this poured in and then you can come back in? So can you go right over there? Thank you.
We're gonna rinse this jar that had the lye solution. And then just to be safe, we're also gonna rinse it with white vinegar to neutralize any lye that might still be hanging out in there. I'm also gonna give my gloves just a spritz of the vinegar. Yep, slowly, slowly. What are you doing? This is yet another instance of me making things harder than they have to be, but I already had to go out and get a crock pot and get the lye. I didn't want to put it off any longer to have to go buy an immersion blender as well. So we're just going to get it done. And I always enjoy figuring out how to do things with less, less equipment, different things that we just maybe don't have to have. Obviously you could do this on the stove, so you don't even have to have a crock pot because people have been making soap for a very long time without crock pots and immersion blenders and all of the things. So the goal here is emulsification, which means that the oil and the water aren't separating yeah. there, and that they're sticking together. And so you're supposed to be able to put a spoon in it, and when you lift it up, they're not separated. I knew going in that coconut oil reaches that point a lot quicker than olive oil. Cocoa oil. Cocoa oil, which is... Airplane. It's an airplane. Yeah. And it really looks like that's what's happening. Like the coconut oil is nearly there, but the olive oil is nowhere close. So we're just above 150 degrees, which is the area we want to be in. And they say you don't need to beat it, you just need to stir it. So I'm trying not to go too crazy with it. I've watched the videos and read the blogs, and I know that this is possible. I've seen people do it with a spoon. And I'm tempted to just leave it and cook it and see what happens, but I also really don't like ruining things. So I'm not 100% certain what the best course of action is here because my olive oil is just nothing. Child just jumped off the counter. Um, and you cannot make soap without emulsification. If the things are not combined and stable, they will not stay combined and stable if they aren't there to begin with. So here I am, whisking away, because you know. to do it right about the same time that my grandma was getting into soap making. And so I had this big batch of soap and then my mom gave me a bunch of soap that my grandma had given her and I had soap for days and I mean a year. Like I had soap for probably a year. I had made my batch of soap and decided that it was great. And then, so then I went out and bought a soap mold and was all excited about making soap all the time. And then we were moving and I got rid of the crock pot, but I kept the mold and I'm very glad that I did because it's going to be much nicer with the mold. I don't think I believe the people who say that you don't have to beat it. I really do feel like it's going to require some more help to get it mixed properly. Like just a stir isn't doing anything. It's not mixing my two types of oils. But see, when I start to beat it, that's when I start getting more what everybody else's looks like, you know? See how now I've got spots on top? <laughs> it is changing very slowly. And it probably doesn't help that I keep taking breaks. Like I have to start a movie for the kids and I have to get her doll a bathtub and like all the things. And it's about lunchtime and I'm gonna have to do that. But I'm really hoping that I can just buckle down and stir this for like a solid five minutes, just like go to town on it. And hopefully I can get it somewhere before I have to stop and make lunch. 
Okay, so this is where we're at after five straight minutes of whisking. It's definitely not emulsified. And it's definitely not tracing. Um, like when you move through it, it's not leaving lines. Uh, kind of like when you're whipping cream, right? And you start to get those soft peaks. Yes, I understand that I'm a crazy person. And I have come to terms with it. Brain mill, whisked soap. I just hope it's nice, you know? It's really gonna be a bummer if it's all like, not nice. And now it's time for a lunch break because my kids think they're starving to death. And I mean, they probably are. What can I do better with my left hand? Eat? Whisk. Definitely eat. Okay, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. Things are happening. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> this is actually starting to look like a homogeneous solution. It's emulsifying. It is happening. Look at this. Look at this we have trace we have emulsion we have everything and i don't know i just turned it up i let it get to about 160 degrees and i don't know if that was it because all of a sudden it just came together holy moly you guys it's hot all right i'm covering this with plastic wrap finally um so that it's gonna keep the moisture in so that our soap doesn't dry out we're gonna let it cook and we're gonna wait to see it start bubbling. It's gonna boil and it's gonna start kind of coming up over the edges. And then when the whole thing bubbles up, it should be ready to go. I just wanna show you real quick how it's just starting to bubble up on that side. It's getting bigger there. It's hard to see. Okay, well that is cooking. I'm going to measure out an ounce of essential oils. I have wild orange and cedar wood. Okay, very cedary. Let's get a little more orange. Hold on. Riley, don't touch it, please. Hold on, I gotta get my face lined up again. Yeah, that's one of Lila's. Very scientific, you know. Alright, it's about an ounce. Will you smell that for me? You like it? Fifty percent. Here you go, girl. about two hours, which is longer than all the recipes say it should take, but finally getting bubbly in the middle and having the edges start to collapse in on themselves, which is the goal. I'm going back to the food thermometer now because it's cooked up enough that it should be soap. Okay, so we are, we're gunning for about 200 degrees. But it's up to 172, I think we're probably pretty close. It looks like the pictures look 181. So at this point, there are some people that who do what is called the zap test, where you take a little bit of the soap and you put it on your tongue. And if it's like touching a battery on your tongue and it zaps you, then you know it's not ready. Um, that doesn't really sound like something I want to do. Uh, it doesn't sound like the safest thing in the world, but I do want to make sure that it is all the way cooked through and totally saponified. Um, totally made into soap and the lye has all been neutralized because we don't want to be using that soap on our skin if it has not gotten to that point yet. It's so close. There we go. Alrighty. Perfect. So now we're going to pull it out. We want it to start cooling down now because we're going to add our scents when we get back down below 180 degrees. So I'm going to give it a quick stir here. It smells like soap. Not like my 
essential oils that I'm going to put in it, but you know, soapy. And I have my soap mold here ready to go as soon as it cools down. I believe that's going to be the part of the process where we actually are going to want to act quickly instead of the sitting around and waiting that we've been doing all day long. Um, I think this crock pot doesn't get super hot. I think that next time I do this, I will turn it up to high and see if that helps everything just move a little quicker. It's definitely a learning process. A little change of scenery for all of us is probably nice. My husband is working on the Jeep in the garage right over there and uh, he keeps grinding on things so hopefully hopefully it won't be too loud here in the next few minutes okay so i'm at 178 degrees i'm gonna add it's about an ounce of essential oils my tripod fell over on the counter and knocked my jar over and i didn't have much left so it's close to an ounce um it just probably won't be as strong as it would have been otherwise, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna mix it in. At first it has a really strong cedar smell and then the orange starts to come through, which is nice. I wanted something that was gonna be like light and fresh, but that like my husband was still gonna wanna use, you know? So I figure when you add that like cedar wood or sandalwood, those sort of earthy woodsy smells then men tend to like it a little more and we're gonna mold it you don't need a soap mold to do this the first time i did it i did use a pringles can and it worked just fine you can use pretty much anything if you just line it with some wax paper silicone molds work Oh, that's what I should do. I have more here than is going to fit in this mold, I think. Well, I guess I'll just fill it all the way up to the top. I'm thinking like a baker, right? I don't want to fill my, fill my loaf pan all the way to the top. It's going to spill over, but this is soap, not banana bread. It's going to take some practice to make it actually be pretty, I think. What's up, soap lady? Mm, not a lot. Not a lot of. Okay, there we go. We have a loaf of soap. Hot process soap doesn't have to cure the way cold process soap does. Um, cold process soap you have to let sit for a while. Multiple weeks. Uh, don't ask me exactly. Well, you could ask me later and I would look it up. Um, but I don't know off the top of my head because I've never made cold process soap. Hot process soap has to harden which it should do in a couple of days, and then you can slice it and use it. But they do say that it gets better after a week or two. This is such an interesting texture right now. It's like almost waxy, but not quite. And kind of slimy, because I mean, it's soap, but like it's warm. Oh, there are the kids. I guess it's not that early. So interesting. Oh, I gotta go be a mom. Bye. Okay, let's unmold this soap. I think it's been three days. Honestly, it could have been two, but I think it's been three. And it's still a little bit soft on top, but I'm wondering if maybe it'll dry faster if I cut it up. So. say you can mold it as soon as or unmold it as soon as it is hard enough that it doesn't damage the soap to unmold it it's still very soft here we have a loaf of soap which part can i help you cut some for you show yourself to the camera i can do it by myself Okay, but those are getting too thin. Oh, yeah. I go cut one cut. You want to cut one? Slow. Okay, right yeah. there, Riley. Do the last cut. Okay. Nice. I did all the cutting. Yeah. My soap beautiful. Yeah. Mine. Okay, last update on the soap project coming to you from my closet. 
office. <laughs> we, I just did the math and I ended up with about 10 bars of soap and it cost about $9.50 to make. So it's about a dollar a bar, which is not bad. There it is. We have soap. I did not account for the essential oils, partly because they're going to be totally different depending on which oils you use. And also because I never buy essential oils, I just steal them from my mother-in-law. So I don't actually know what they cost, but there we go. It's been about two weeks and we've used like maybe a quarter of a bar. I just have one in the main bathroom and I have a few other projects I'm going to try with it. It's still pretty soft. Um, it never did totally harden. I'm guessing that's just because of all the olive oil that's in it. I might try one that's heavier in coconut oil next time. Especially now that I've done the math and realized that the olive oil and the coconut oil are almost the same price. I always have this feeling that coconut oil is more expensive and so I don't want to just use all coconut oil, but it's not. So I might as well use the stuff I like. Thanks for sticking it out with me, guys. This has been a long process. It's probably not as long for you as it is for me, but it's been two weeks in the making and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I do it. It's been fun.